welcome today to the project show of P2 Loops M, participating in Igluna 2021 and joining us here for the field campaign. Igluna is a platform coordinated by Space Innovation here in Switzerland with students all around the world that they develop technologies to boost the future of space exploration. The team Loops M from University Sapienza and Enea in Rome are working very hard this year to have an output production of microgreens, as well as a storage system. It's all automatic and robotic. They have also a bioconversion system, a micrometeorite shield, and then everything is displayed in virtual reality. It's a very complete project. You'll hear more about it in a few seconds. And well, don't forget to write your questions in the YouTube chat. So the team will be happy to answer all of your questions and comments after the show. I'm here today live at the Ferkes House, the Swiss Museum of Transport, and the team is home safely due to the current corona situation. They are staying at home in Rome, in Italy. Let's check if they are around. P2, are you there? Hey, hello everyone from Rome. Hello guys. Hello everyone from the Enea Casaccia Research Center. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi, everyone. Great, so we have Hi. them all and ready to start the project show. Let's watch the video. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Loops and Project Show. I'm Ricardo Sivalesi, project manager, and your personal guide on this journey through the Loops and experience. In the last century, Mankind's greatest ambition was to be able to go to space and walk on the moon. Well, in this century, we strive to take it one step further and to settle there. Therefore, we decided to design a lunar operative outpost for the production and storage of microgreens. In short, Lufzen. But what do we need to be able to live on the lunar surface? Surely, we need to get fresh food produced in a sustainable way, and we must face some really extreme conditions. So let's take a look together at what these conditions are, and how we plan to take on the dangers of the lunar environment. Hi, we are Michela Boscia and Sian Kumar. We will introduce you the Micrometeorites Unit. The members are Bergen Di Alessio, Boscia Michela, Gergari Matteo, Kumar Sidant, Piras Michela, Foxy Chiara, and Torrini Tommaso. The lunar environment is very hostile for a future human settlement on the moon's surface. The new house will be located in a cavity at the moon's south pole. At the south pole, there are low temperatures reaching a value of minus 230 Celsius degree, which is an extreme temperature considered the lowest temperature ever reached on Earth is of minus 67.8 Celsius degree. The greenhouse is also constantly exposed to cosmic radiation, characterized by an equivalent ambient dose of 0.1 sievert, which is a value very dangerous for the human body, considering the human being can be exposed to a radiation dose higher than 1 millisievert per year. Another danger present on the lunar surface is the possible impact of magnetorites, which have a diameter between 1 micrometer and 1 centimeter, and a velocity between 7 and 17 kilometers per second which is an extremely high value, consider that it is equal to 25,200 kilometers per hour. So our shield is critical for the renowned survival and for the protection of the astronauts that are working inside the structure. The main function of the shield is to stop a micrometeorite that impacts at high speed and therefore avoiding renowned perforation and the precipitation. Due to the lunar low temperature, the shield has also an insulating function to ensure that the internal temperature of the greenhouse is maintained constantly within a certain range to help the correct growth of the microgreens. Moreover, due to the dangerous space radiation, the shield has to stop the radiation coming from deep space and to protect the electronic equipment, such as the farm bot and the astronaut crew. The shield is a soft for shield, which is one of the largest shield configurations. The shield is the assembly of four layers. The first layer is the bumper, which is made of aluminum 682P6 and aims to fragment the impacting micrometeorite. The second layer, which is composed of next and carrier, 
slows down the medium dry fragments. The next layer is made of hydrogen, in particular cryogen Z, and has a thermal insulation function to keep constant the internal temperature of the greenhouse. The final layer is very wall, which is made of aluminum 7075 T6 and must stop the slow down fragments of the medium material, avoiding the perforation of the greenhouse structure. We'd like to thank our sponsors who provided us the material necessary for the shield assembly. Avimeto provided us the aluminum alloys for the bumper and rear wall, while Insultechnic Group supplied us the Nextel and Kevlar fabrics for the realization of the stuffing layer. The carriage of Zim for the thermal insulation has been provided by Technogroup. In this video, you can see the simulation of a micrometrite impacting the shield. The crater diameter is one centimeter and its speed is 12 km per second. As you can see, the bumper destroys the prototype, splitting the micrometeorite in many smaller parts. These fragments are further slowed down by the stuffing layer, and they finally hit the rear wall without any perforation. The micrometeorite team would like to thank Professor Fabio Santoni, Dr. Paolo Mazzioli, and Dr. Luca Guglielmetti for all the support given to us for the success of this project. And again, we would like to thank our sponsors, Avio Metal, Insus Techno Group, Technowell, who gave us the possibility to make this project clear. So, with this shield, we have covered the protection from harsh temperatures, radiation, and even from possible micrometeorites. However, we still need to face the production of fresh food in situ. We thought of an innovative solution capable of using the smallest space possible and with barely any need for human activity thanks to the implementation of a robotic car. Let's see together what that looks like and what it can do at the moment. Hello everyone, we are Luca Furlani, Damiano Sarditti, William Picariello, Carlo Pirolo, Marco Panetti, and Tommaso Monello. We are members of the automation unit from the Luxem project. With this video, we will introduce you to our work concerning the development of an automated cultivation system for microgreens suitable for a greenhouse. Enjoy this video. The final goal of the automation team is to design an automated cultivation system for microgreens for a greenhouse. It is able to supply fresh vegetables to a crew of six astronauts and the ace their activities. So the team has designed an automated vertical hydroponic cultivation system consisting of four modules and managed with the help of a robotic arm. Microgreens are young vegetables with a, with a vitamin content so concentrated compared to the common vegetables that is enough to eat few tens of grams per day to satisfy the requirements of some vitamins. For example, 50 grams of red cabbage can provide the daily needs of C, E, and K vitamins. To prove the advantages of automation, only one of the four modules was built during the Igluna 2021 mission, which was called the R3 Max Second, as it was inspired by the R3, the all cultivation module designed by our partner INEA at the starting point of our studies. The prototype has four trays, each with a cultivation area of one meter squared and are able to produce from 400 grams to two kilograms of microgreens every 10, 15 days, depending on the species. The trays are automatically extractable, like drawers, and able to come out from the structure to the robot's working area. Let's concentrate on the robotic system. The Hopebot is a robotic system that accomplishes the main cultivation operations, such as seeding, watering, cutting, and harvesting. The Hopebot is based on Farmbot Genesis XL, a robotic cultivation system provided to us by Farmbot, one of our providers. In order to make the Farmbot functional to our project, we made some changes to its design and we 3D printed our own new tools with the help of one of our sponsors, Refresh AG. The new tools are a seeder, that allows us to plant many seeds at the same time, since one tray counts 10,000 seeds, a cutter and a rake, in order to allow the system to harvest autonomously the plants at the end of the cultivation cycle.
In this image, you can see how our software infrastructure, the Heartbot and the Heartcube, are controlled by two separate applications, the Fartbot web app and the Greolab software. These two applications communicate through a Python script. The Fartbot web app is a web-based application that allows you to control and configure your Fartbot from any desktop computer, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. From the Fartbot web app, you can move the Fartbot, design your cultivation, manage the common sequences and took tools. Growlab software is the control booth of the system. The main purpose of this software is to allow you to fully configure the whole system. Connecting the grow node to a router with an internet connection, it allows you to access from anywhere at any time. Thanks to the implementation of such a system, the astronauts will only need to refill the nutrient solution, the disinfectant, and the seed stand, as well as uh, to replace or clean the old substrate at the beginning of each cultivation cycle, and to harvest the, uh, the final product at the end of the cycle. The substrate is, is kind of a mat that replaces the soil in this type of cultivation. Uh, the microgreens that remains on the substrate uh, will be recycled uh, by, uh, through uh, the system devised by bioconversation unit uh, of our project, uh, while the rest of the operation will be carried out autonomously by the Hardcube Mark II. A typical cultivation cycle begins with the substrate sterilization. The seeds are then placed on the tray by the robot and are later sterilized through nebulization of the disinfectant solution. After this, a germination phase of four to five days begins, in which the roots and the first leaves will start to grow. In this phase, the seeds must be in the darkness and the nutrient solution is supplied by the robot. At the end of this period, the plants will need light, which will be provided by some LED lamps given by our sponsor, Chris Science. After about 10 days, the microgreens are ready to be harvested. The robot will cut them and accumulate them on one side of the tray so they will be easier to pick up for the astronauts. All these operations that were just described are carried out using different tools which have been specifically designed for microgreens and to be compatible with the robot. Some of them are, for example, the seeder that sucks the seeds and releases them, the cutter that cuts the micro vegetables, and the rake. We would like to thank our sponsors, without whom it would not have been possible to carry out such a demanding project in such a difficult year. In particular, hydroponica.it, for all objects concerning hydroponics, Manifattura Maiano for the substrate of our crops, Chris Science for the lights, Refresh.ag for having created the new tools for the robot, K Adriatica for fertilizers, Open Grow for the modules that partly take care of the management of the crop, Italian Sprout for having provided the seeds, and Cultifutura for supporting our project. Thank you very much. What you saw was the prototype in its current form. However, the team has a vision for what the future of this prototype could be on the lunar surface, which would optimize the production in terms of cost, space, and power needed. Here, inside this lunar greenhouse, you can see the fully optimized prototype in a possible future. This prototype is made by four main structures, all identical to the one created by the automation division of this project. And it is capable of performing all the tasks required to complete a cultivation cycle, such as the watering, the seeding, and the harvesting. All of the timings are faster than in the real world, but the activities are performed faithfully. Here, you can see the trays getting flooded with water, and soon, the water gets drained out of it. Then, the seeding procedure takes place. The robot in this case has a telescopic arm, through which it can reach every tray, and inside, a small pipe is taking care of the seeds, placing them in an equal manner on the whole level. Throughout this video, you will also see other important activities, such as the seed sterilization done through nebulization. 
there will also be the growth of the microgreens done a little faster than normal. While here they only take a few seconds to fully grow, they actually take 12 to 15 days to complete a cultivation cycle to microgreen. In the end, there will also be the harvesting done by a tool capable of cutting the microgreens and then gather them through suction so that all the vegetables are ready for the astronauts. Now, only one important feature remains to be explained. How is this all sustainable? But first of all, what do we mean by sustainable? Well, in simple terms, in this case, we mean that we cannot bring on the moon too many resources and that we have to recycle them in an efficient way. That is why we thought of using a new bioconversion system based on insects to make use of the greenhouse's waste. But let's watch together what that really is about. Hi everybody, we are Giulio Metelli, Riccardo Pagliarello, Marco Garignani. We are members of the Bioconversion Unit and we will introduce you to a possible bioregenerative life support system compartment. We, as humans, need some essential resources like food, water and oxygen that our planet offers us every day. This is possible thanks to the biogeochemical processes that occur on Earth since eons. To replicate these processes on a lunar outpost, we need to set up an artificial ecosystem consisting of many complex symbiotic relationships among higher plants, animals, and microorganisms. This is called a bioregenerative life support system and can provide a habitation environment similar to Earth's biosphere for space missions with extended duration in deep space and with multiple crews. Within a bioregenerative life support system, it has been demonstrated that higher plants take a crucial role as they could produce oxygen, reduce the carbon dioxide and recycle water. Bioregenerative life support system primarily involve recycling of resources and several waste processing techniques are employed to reach the maximum biological turnover and valuable resources. This is a mandatory task for space application by the colonization of the Moon. Here on Earth, the waste management is one of the biggest challenges of our time, and so it will be surely the same on a lunar outpost. To face this problem, we chose insects as an ideal candidate for waste treatment. During the Igluna 2021, as a part of the Luxem team, we realized a prototype compartment in which the biological degradation process of organic waste is carried out using an insect. Our candidate, Hermes Illusions, is a true fly of the Diptera stratomidae family. It is commonly known as black soldier fly, and it is widely used in waste management industry to treat both urban and organic waste. Black soldier flies are used on Earth in low-tech waste management industry and require very low human maintenance. We have chosen this insect because of its great capacity to treat organic waste coming from a wide range of sources. 
Black soldier flies, voracious larvae, work as a waste recovery system, diminishing the volume of the waste while accumulating proteins and fats during the growth. For this project, we designed a completely artificial environment to promote the black soldier flies rearing using the non-edible plant biomass obtained from the microgreens cultivation. Our rearing system, the RGM, is a cube made of aluminum profile and insulated panels and has a climatic management system. We can precisely control temperature and air humidity in the internal volume. At the same time, thanks to the special LED lamps, we can give insects the right kind of illumination to help their growth. RGM is able to recreate a suitable environment for the well-being of insects independently from the external environment. Theoretically, we can rear insects in the center of Rome, in Switzerland, or on the moon without any problems. We need only something that generates electrical power, like solar panels, or to be connected to the power grid. We successfully rear hermits and lucians in these stringent conditions, feeding the larvae with microgreens waste collected from the vertical cultivation on the Earth Cube Mark II, and the adults produce fertilized eggs to start a new cycle of bioconversion. So, finally, I want to thank who made this possible, our project manager Riccardo Estivalessi and our supervisor Luca Nardi and Elena Lampazzi, and also our main partner of the Bioconversion Unit, uh, Evo Conversion System, that supply us with the uh, LED lamps. We also would like to take a moment to thank our partners Enea and Mars Planet and all of our sponsors for all the great help that they gave us. We couldn't have done this project without them, so thank you. And thank you all for watching our project show. We hope you enjoyed, and we cannot wait to answer your questions. Welcome back, and that was a great project show. I had a smile in my face. It was really well explained, very interesting to watch. Thank you for preparing this. Maybe just to add as a side note, this project uh, had a lot of difficulties with the situation in Italy with the lockdowns, but they managed successfully to complete their project. So we are very proud of them, very happy for their achievements. A big congratulations. So I would like to give the chance to the other stu students that are connected from this team. So uh, to say if they are there, are you there, rest of the P2 team? Yes, we're here. Hi. Hi, from Italy. Hi, from Rome. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Great, so we see that everyone is online waiting to have some questions. And I'm just checking if there's some questions. If you haven't asked your question, please do so. So use that YouTube chat and just ask your question to the student team. Uh, we have here something, uh, especially with the situation you had. So what was the biggest challenge of your project? Well, I think that overall communication was a, a huge challenge. As we noticed also uh, this morning with the ESA uh, Director General, we, we know that communication is key for a very good project. And, and uh, definitely it was one of the huge major challenges in a so vast group with so many different objectives. But I am sure that uh, also each single part of the project has, has had its own very huge main challenges. So uh, can someone from the automation side of the project tell us their biggest challenge? Well, surely um, COVID was a massive challenge for us since we had to build the whole unit and go to the lab that was closed, unfortunately, due to lockdowns that occurred in Italy from March, uh, end of May. So we had to really rush to, to finish our project in time. Thank you. What about the bioconversion unit? Any of you do want to add anything? 
our biggest challenge was to develop our system itself uh, and try to uh, find a way to rear Hermetia illusions because uh, all of us come from a, a different uh, scientific background. Uh, I'm a, bio a biologist, but I treat uh, plants uh, for the major time. And uh, Ricardo uh, is to a, bi a biotechnologist, while Marco is uh, an engineer. Thank you, Giulio. And Alessio, do you want to add anything from the bioconversion, from the micrometeorite shield unit? The big challenge uh, was phasing uh, the test campaign as well as the, um, the prototype assembly. Uh, I'm agree with you uh, when you talk about communication, and communication was the key uh, for reaching uh, our goals. And uh, this uh, will be a base for uh, uh, the future, for the future works. Thank you, Alessio. So yeah, that was our, uh, our answer. Thank you, Tatiana. Yes, really a lot of challenges, but it's good how you learn from them and you overcome them. So at the end, it's a positive outcome, hopefully. I see there's another question coming up for the bioconversion system. So they're asking, why did you choose an insect for the unit? Well, uh, we choose an insect, uh, an insect, this uh, Hermetia illusions, uh, because we need a major degradator. Uh, a lot of studies have been carried out uh, using bacteria and uh, fungi, but for our project, uh, we have a lot of waste coming from the uh, Ort Cube Mach 2 production system, from microgreen production system. And so we think that we uh, need a major degradator, a degradator that can treat a lot of, of waste, a big volume of, of waste. This is why we choose an insect. Very interesting. I look forward to seeing insects on the moon. I have actually a question for the automation system. So you showed the application for moon, but what about Earth? Is there an application for the automation system here on Earth? Yeah, yeah there, are, okay. there are many applications uh, and it can be very important now due to climate change and problems with cultivation due to the fact that this system allows you to cultivate autonomously and in a very limited space and it doesn't use much water. So compared to um, traditional cultivation, it has a lot less of an impact on the environment. So this can be really useful for the next couple of decades in, on, the, in the, on Earth and on the moon. Great. Um, and what are the next steps they're asking for the coming months, perhaps for each system? So for your system, if you want to start first? Maybe we can start from the meter meter shield instead. Sure. So, let's see. Yes, uh, the next step um, will be the test. Um, other tests to subject uh, both the prototype and uh, all the materials uh, which we are used um, in all the tests we have planned uh, for this project and uh, we also participate at the, at the, the Congress uh, which is in India and um, we uh, will continue uh, this kind of study in order to improve uh, our project that we have shown uh, here. Thank you, Alessio. What about the automation side? William? Hello, from the domination, uh, oh, look. Okay. in the future, uh, the robot uh, need certainly to be improved because uh, uh, um, uh, uh, we want to implement uh, all the fall tray, four tray, because uh, now it is uh, only possible to cultivate on two trays. Uh, so the robot uh, will be, um, Equipped with a telescopic arm uh, to reach the other the, the highest two trays, uh, so I think uh, uh, these uh, will be the most uh, and um, um, the near the nearest improvement uh, necessary. Thank you, Luca. What about uh, bioconversion, Marco? Can you answer the question for your side? Yes, I think that uh, we would like to increase the the design in the uh, control in the management unit. So trying to add some new features in order to control with a more uh, in an easier way 
the temperature and the condition inside also to, to try different condition and trying to save some energy. So in order to reduce the resource utilization from the, the outside the moon, the moon base, and try to be more economic, both in terms of um, the efficiency of the system and the, in terms of the precision in the temperature and humidity management inside. Thank you. Great, so, that was really great uh, insights. I hope you, you keep your project going so actually we would see it one day in the moon or with further applications here on Earth. I'm not seeing any more questions on the chat. Let me just give one last check. But otherwise on my side, I also was curious for the bioconversion system. Why are you not using the sunlight? Why do you have the LED lights there? Okay, uh, but because mainly we would like to, to be more independent from the external, external environment. So trying to, as, I say, as we said uh, during the presentation, to can uh, rear insects on moon, on Mars, maybe underground, maybe in some, I don't know, small room uh, in, a, in a base. So the sunlight we, will be a, a very big uh, challenge in terms of design of the overall base. So we need some transparent uh, uh, glass, maybe, for example, to, to allow sunlight to come inside the base. And we want to be more independent so we can put our system everywhere in every place uh, just with a power connection and atmosphere management uh, outside and nothing more. So maybe this was the, the idea in the future. Of this. Very good answer. Thank you very much. I think there's no more questions. So now I give you the chance if you want to add something, maybe explain a bit more details about your experiments, about the latest test results you got, or if you want to share your lessons learned, anything you want to share with the public? Sure. Uh, so let's start, I think, with the micrometeorite shield. Uh, Alessio, do you want to share anything else from this, the, your side of the project? From our side, uh, as you know, uh, we have uh, finished the, the product assembling and we have continued in, we have continued in, uh, in the test campaign. Uh, subjecting the, the prototype, uh, both in, uh, in a thermal and radiation environment, as you know. And um, we, we uh, as I said before, we, we will continue to work on it uh, to improve our studies. Okay, thank you. And what about the automation side? Do you so want to share any, anything new further? For the automation side, I can add that uh, the software is able to, um, through the grow up tools uh, that are uh, our eyes, is um, able to catch some values from the sensors, tem temperature sensor, uh, humidity of the substrate, substrate and uh, is able to send all this data to our brain, that is uh, the Python program. This program is able to command the robot and uh, to uh, command him to, uh, to do some operation that is required from the sensor values. Okay, thank you, Damiano. And uh, last but not least, what about the bioconversion unit? Anything else you want to share about your project? Maybe Marco, Julia? Yes, yes. Uh, we we are now planning to, as Marco said before, we are now planning to add some other modules uh, with the existing module because uh, we want to try to treat directly the plant production and the uh, insect uh, rearing. Uh, we want to try to uh, face the problem of the CO2 production and the O2 production for the plants and for the and for the insects uh, themselves. So this is some that we want to try in the next uh, month or maybe year. Thank you, Thank Julia. You. So basically, that's all we could add for from our side. And uh, Tatiana. Yes, fantastic. So I wish you all the best with your next steps. 
I really hope to keep in touch in the future to see how your project develops. And I yes. want to congratulate you once again for your excellent participation in Igluna and your successful results. Thank so, you, Tatiana. Yes. So can I just add for some more words? Sure. Okay. So uh, last but not least, we have many people to thank. So I want to thank them because without them, this project wouldn't have been possible at all. So first of all, of course, we have to thank our many sponsors once more because they provided us the resources necessary to complete the creation of our many prototypes. And that was fundamental. Uh, when many did not believe in us, they did. And that's what made the difference. Then I would like to thank our professor, Fabio Santoni, and all of our super supervisors. Uh, so Paolo Marzioli, Luca Guglielmetti, and Luca Nardi from NEA. Last but not least, I'd like to thank Space Innovation, and especially you, Tatiana, for your guidance and your patience during these two years of Igluna with us. So, thank, thank you very you. much, Ricardo. You're very much welcome. And well, I will say now goodbye, but as it will be a see you later, hopefully. And uh, warm regards up to Rome. We're again here live from Ferkes House in Lucerne. We have projects here. We have projects also on top of Mount Pilatus and the lower station Kinserec. For the people around Switzerland, please come visit us. And also, if you're in Switzerland or all around the world, follow us online. The next project show starts at 14 hours Central European summer time. So please join us for the rest of the field campaign. Congrats again, P2, and see you soon.